Hello, and welcome to Sports Scene, your daily dose of sports. I'm Cole Gallagher. I'm Tiffany Howard. I'm Cole Gallagher. To start the show, we're going to do a little basketball. So, you guys might have heard that uh, UConn beat Butler 53-41 to in the NCAA Men's Basketball National Championships. So, what would you guys think, Tiffany, to begin with? Um, I thought it was one of the poorest performances by both teams ever. I mean... Um, in the first half alone, it was the lowest scoring game since 1946. And, I mean, Butler being there for the second consecutive time and only shooting 19%, I mean, I don't know, it's kind of ugly to watch. I actually thought it was probably one of the worst games I've ever seen in my life. Besides Wisconsin and Penn State, that game was pretty brutal. And now to see the national championship game was just absolutely horrendous. I mean, Butler shot 18%, the worst ever in a title game since 1941, making 12 to 64, it couldn't get any worse. And even Kemba was off that night. I mean, he was shooting um, five for 19. It was just like nothing was going in, and it was just really boring. There's definitely a lid on the rims. Um, the uh, the uh, actually, Calhoun became the first or the oldest coach to ever win the NCAA championships, um, which is a big thing because. <coughs> There's been a lot of old coaches to win. Uh, next, uh, it was 22 to 19 at the half. And, I mean, if you really like defensive basketball, this was your game. You'd probably love this game. But who likes defensive basketball? I love scoring. We all love scoring, yeah, obviously. Exactly. So it's, I mean, Alex Oriaki had 11 boards and 11 points. Kemba Walker at 16. That's, I hope next year's game is a little more exciting. I don't know. You'd, you'd think Kemba and Jeremy Lamb would put up more points mm -hmm. in the more critical game. You know, yeah. Kemba's looking at the NBA. Jeremy Lamb's a freshman. You know, is he going to stay or not? What's he, what's he going to bring to the game? And then Butler, you know, you really didn't know what they were going to do since they lost to Duke last year, and they wanted to come out and win it this year, and they just, you know, really couldn't get together. Matt Howard was off. It, Shelvin Mack was off. It was just... Not the best game I've ever seen. Yeah, and some some people are actually wondering if Calhoun's even going to come back. Like, yes, because I put that little plug yeah. in for the age. He's. Some people say he might he might retire on top. You know, pull a Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> but uh, he, but he's. If you talk to assistant coaches, they um, they think that Calhoun's more energized than ever. They think he's he's really found a new life with his team. He's. They say he's got he's got more energy now than he had in the past five years. So. Who knows what's going to happen with, uh, I don't know, with him. UConn, yeah, yeah. exactly. But I, I, I've, I can't see Butler making, I don't know, I, I don't like Butler. I just don't I, like yeah. Butler. I hate Matt Howard. I hate him, Matt Howard. I'm glad he's done. <laughs> he's big, dumb, and ugly. Well, you think, you opinion. know, with Howard leaving and Mac, you know, today entering for the draft without an agent because he's a junior, <clears throat> You know, is Brad Stevens going to leave? You know, he's been asked that last year. He, yeah. he did sign, though, that contract, yeah. but... He says he likes it. Yep. I mean, so we'll have to see what happens there. All right. Uh, moving on, we, uh, we got the little women's basketball for you. There's also women's uh, national championship. So, um, t first time national champions, Texas A&M, beat Notre Dame 76-70. to 70. A much more thrilling game if you're into <laughs> scoring. But uh, what did you guys think, Cole, to start? You know, it was a decent game, not into the whole women's basketball, but I had to sit down and watch it. You know, two teams that were not number one seeds going in and, you know, playing their hearts out. Mm -hmm. Texas A and M, you know, Daniel Adams scored twenty two in the second half, proved she was an all American. Just she finished outrageous. with thirty. She really just out rebounded and just everything to Notre Dame and really took control of that game. And uh, you know, their shooting was you know, Notre Dame shooting in the first half was 14 of 18, and then in the second half, in the first 60 minutes, they were 7 to 16. So it was, you know, are they concerned about, you know, Texas a Adams and what she's yeah. going to do or what's, you know, what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. What did you think? Um, well, I'm, I think defense, again, um, was kind of what won the game for Texas A&M. Um, they definitely had heart throughout the whole tournament, though, and I think they deserved the title. Like, they, they beat two number one seeds to get there. Mm -hmm. um, Adams really showed up to play. She had 22 points solely in the solely in the second half. I yeah. mean, she was just unguardable. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't have an answer for her. And White also. I mean, she was clutched in the end and showed her heart hitting hitting a three. You know, clutch in the last yeah. minute. Oh, yeah. 
and then um, with the final steal with the last 30 seconds remaining, um, to get fouled, um, I mean, to get, um, to get fouled and then hitting two clutch free throws to, you know, clutch the lead at five. Yeah, yeah. Um, kind of on a different note, I'm going to talk about Notre Dame a little bit because they beat the juggernaut UConn who had yeah. a 90 game win streak during the season. Yep. Not well from last season into this season, yep. but that's the the most ever in NCAA basketball for sure. Um, probably any sport, I think. Yeah. I'd assume. I think um, yeah. But they, they just couldn't carry it over to beat Texas A&M. So next up, we're going to talk a little golf. This last weekend was the Masters Tournament in Augusta, Georgia. Um, it was one of the most exciting final rounds in any golf tournament ever, in my opinion, if you missed it. But um, Charles Schwarzel of South Africa edged everyone else in an up for grabs Masters. So, what would you think, Tiffany? Um, I mean, Schwarzel started the day off hot with a, a long birdie chip and then birdied that last four holes to get the victory. But um, also, McElroy, um, he's something to talk about. He's only 21. Oh, yeah. Um, and I know he blew it in the black na back nine, but I mean, he's 21, um, and he ended with an 80, I think. Yeah, an 80. Yeah. Yep. Just, which is not a very no. good score. Yeah. No. Considering that he got a, um, a 65 on the first day, yeah. and then the end in the, exactly. the fourth off an 80, that's pretty bad. Um, um, yeah. The Masters, me, I really didn't watch it. I'm not the big golf guy, but when it comes to the Masters in the third round, I'll turn it on. Yeah. And I happened to turn it on, and Tiger Woods was tied for the lead with 10 under. I'm like, where did he come from? Because he was in the lower rounds that, um, when it started. And then, you know, Charles Schwartzel comes and wins the Masters with a 66. I mean, he did really well. Oh, I'm yeah. glad. Congrats to him. And Rory just, you know, wasn't his day in the third round. I mean, shooting that 80 and... I mean, he was just off, but, you know, give him credit. He's 21 years old on a big stage like that. Yeah. I think he's going to bounce back. The, uh, on, the, on the last day, eight players actually held the lead mm -hmm. or shared the lead at one point or another um, on the back nine, which is just uh, it's just parody. It's simple parody. And, like, they uh, – I think Angel Cabrera, just to name a few, Angel Cabrera had it, uh, Rory had it, Tiger had it, every, there's a whole bunch of people ahead of yeah. it, but um, I think the big, big story is Rory's fall apart. It was like if you watched it, it was like watching a car wreck happen. Yep. You just cringed every time he would hit a bad shot, and yeah. he actually had a triple bogey in one hole, which was, I mean, yep. triple bogeys are bad for me. So yeah. well, for I was, him, yeah. I was cheering for him. I mean, he's close to my well, age. Yeah. You know, we got to give the kid you credit. You have to, but um, he just he f he just fell apart of the seams, and then. While he was falling apart, you just noticed how everybody just seemed to roar back yep. up the leaderboard. Yep. And they were taking, I, yeah, going, go ahead. well, they're just taking his power away. Absolutely, I mean, mm -hmm. he would just went down the hole. He started so hot yeah. in that first mm -hmm. round, and it just evaporated like mm -hmm. that. If you watch, like, I'm sure it got to him because, like, y you could hear the holes are so close that you yep. could hear the roars from other people. Like when somebody would make an eagle or make a birdie putt, people would roar, and Rory would end up. <clears throat> Lipping out a putt like he did like three times. Yep. It was, I don't know, it was pretty bad. But moving on, we have kind of alluded to it, but Tiger Woods made a pretty tremendous run in the Masters. He started seven back in the final round, but he had a jaw dropping charge to begin the day. Um, do you guys think Tiger's back? Cool. You know, I don't know if he's back, but I think he's making a step forward. I mean, he finished fourth. With tied with Ogilvy and Donald in the Masters with 10 under, and he uh, shot 700 in the first nine holes, and then the last nine were just off. Mm -hmm. um, he's making his way. I think he's gonna come back. You know, the Masters was a big help, definitely. Just you know, the step forward and what he's been through. I think he's gonna you know eventually make his ground and make his way back up. Yeah. Um, I think he's coming back. I don't know. He says his swings um, starting to feel good again, and he definitely proved that at the Masters. Um, I think he just really needs to figure out his putting issues. Um, he had six three putts over the weekend, and I mean, yeah, that's, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. But he's definitely slowly starting to make his way back. I, I would expect to see Tiger, I mean, mm -hmm. win real soon. So. Yes, absolutely. Um, just kind of going back to what he did on the, last, on the first nine holes of the last day, he, uh, he had birdies on two, number two, number three, and number seven, and an eagle on number eight, which gave him a share of the lead for the first time since the 2007 Masters. But 
then, as you said, he started putting just poorly. He had a three putt yeah. on the 12th to begin with, or, or a three putt on the 12th, for example. And yep. um, I, I was kind of reading some articles on ESPN, and Rick Riley actually said he, he compared it to climbing Mount Everest. Yeah. It was, it's like He said it was like climbing Mount Everest, then falling off while taking a picture. Yeah. You know, it's like you, get, you work so hard to get there. You work, you mm -hmm. struggle, you fight, you get there, and then you're done. Or you're not done, but you're really... <laughs> He made a good push. Yeah. I mean, he just finished too short, which is unfortunate. I mean, you, but you can't sleep on Tiger any longer. No. I think he's he's, he's going to return to form he's gotta. real quick, for sure. Nextly, uh, last Friday, Manny, Manny Ramirez retired, uh, reportedly testing positive for a performance-enhancing drug. So what do you guys think about this? Um, okay, <laughs> so previously he had that 50-game ban, I think. So I think it was probably good move on his part to just retire instead of like prolonging it. I don't know. Um, he's still good though. I mean, he's just getting a little old. Um, he's 39. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and like how he said, he told Joe Madden, I think it was, that he was really disappointed in himself, but like he never said he was sorry. So I don't know, like, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's something that, I don't know. Yeah, should really. Yeah. You know, well, so. I sort of, when I heard about it, I sort of expected it, you know, I linked it to the the drugs he was accused of once of already using it and then the second time he got caught again the thing people are wondering is if he's going to make it to the hall of fame or not i i don't see him making it i mean he has 555 home runs 1800 rbis and he's already got one positive drug test to his name i mean do you really want that link to the hall of fame i mean it's it's sort of going back to barry bonds and his whole scandal i mean you know baseball's just trying to get rid of that whole thing i don't think manny is gonna he Manny Ramirez is undoubtedly the, one of the best right-handers to ever play the game of baseball. Sure, he in the field he was terrible, and he was always known for Manny being Manny, like it says on the screen. Uh, he would often take plays off in right field and goof around and make the wrong play. And he was not a great base runner either, but just his bat was outstanding. He in, in 1999 alone he had 165 RBIs, which only I, which I believe is a major league record. Um, only A Rod, the Babe, Jimmy Fox, and Lou Gehrig have more uh, 100 RBI seasons, and that's pretty good company. Um, you you got a question like you know he, but, with so much statistics yeah. that he did with that 165 or whatever it was, yeah. and then falling off. You know why? You know, really? Yeah, why? Yeah, he. They don't let players in who. Um, who do steroids, so we'll see. But next up, we got, uh, we got a little promo for you, so stay tuned. More beautiful image in the galaxy than that of a nebula. Ever since the Hubble Space Telescope actually started working in 1990, we as a planet have been granted front row seats to the most incredible show in the universe. But what is a nebula? The most general definition of the term is a cloud of interstellar gas and dust. But it turns out that there are several different types. Emission nebula actually emit colored light. These nebula are neat because they are often birthing grounds for new stars. The opposite of an emission nebula is a planetary nebula. Here, stars are in the process of dying and are losing layer after layer of gas to the interstellar winds. Even more dramatic are supernova remnants. These are stars that didn't wait to die. They blew up. A nuclear reaction to the core of the star causes the whole thing to implode on itself. The gases get superheated and explode outward to create these stunning displays. Perhaps the most striking nebula are dark nebulas. Dark nebula are clouds of dust and rock and interstellar junk that block the light behind them. The heavens are filled with entrancing images like these. We've only begun to scratch the surface of what else is out there amongst the stars. All right, welcome back. Uh, next up, we've got a little odds makers for you here. I'm gonna ask these this these fine folks here a question and they're going to give me the odds that it's going to happen so to begin with let's start with the al east um the al east is widely known as one of the best divisions of baseball what are the chances of one of the t that one of the teams from the al east wins the world series tiffany 
Um, I'm gonna have to say the Red Sox came into the season with um, many people's World Series picks. Um, they started off extremely slow, though. And